Weak file permissions. Certain system files can be taken advantage of to perform privilege escalation if the permissions on them are too weak. If a system file has confidential information we can read, it may be used to gain access to the root account. If a system file can be written to, we may be able to modify the way the operating system works and gain root access that way. The slash etc slash shadow file contains user password hashes and by default is not readable by any user except for root. If we are able to read the contents of the shadow file, we might be able to crack the root user's password hash. If we are able to modify the shadow file, we can replace the root user's password hash with one we know. Let's run the Linux Smart Enumeration script without it prompting for a password. We can see from the results that the slash etc slash shadow file is readable. The contents of the file are also shown here. But I'm still going to show you how to get this information manually. First, let's verify the permissions on the file. The file appears to be world readable. This means we can view the password hashes it contains. The first line of the file should contain the root user's password hash, so let's extract that. The password hash is between the first and second colons. The $6 at the start of the hash indicates it was generated using SHA-512. Let's copy the hash and put it into a file on our local machine. Now let's try and crack the hash using John. We're going to try and crack it using the rocku word list. After a few seconds, John manages to crack the hash, revealing the root user's password as password123. Back on the Debian VM, we can use the su command to switch to the root user using this password. Let's run the Linux Smart Enumeration script with the level set to 1. In the results, we see a list of files that our user can write to outside our home directory. The slash etc slash shadow file is in this list. Let's verify the permissions on the file. The file appears to be world writable. Make a backup of the file so we can restore it later. On our local machine, generate a new SHA-512 hash for a known password and copy it. I'm going to use new password as my password. Back on the Debian VM, edit the slash etc slash shadow file and replace the root user's password hash with the one we generated. Use the su command to switch to the root user and enter the new password when prompted. Don't forget to restore the original shadow file when you are done. The slash etc slash password file historically contained user password hashes. For backwards compatibility, if the second field of a user row in the password file contains a password hash, it takes precedent over the hash in the shadow file. If we can write to the password file, we can easily enter a known password hash for the root user and then use the su command to switch to the root user. Alternatively, if we can only append to the file, 
we can create a new user but assign them the root user ID 0. This works because Linux allows multiple entries for the same user ID as long as the usernames are different. The root account in the slash etc slash password file is usually configured like this. The x in the second field instructs Linux to look for the password hash in the slash etc slash shadow file. In some versions of Linux, it is possible to simply delete the x, which Linux interprets as the user having no password. You can then switch to the user by using the su command with the username and just hitting enter. Let's run the Linux smart enumeration script with the level set to 1. In the results, we see a list of files that our user can write to outside our home directory. The slash etc slash password file is in this list. Let's verify the permissions on that file. The file appears to be world writable. On our local machine, generate a new hash for a known password and copy it. I'm going to use password as my password. Back on the Debian VM, edit the slash etc slash password file and enter the hash in the second field of the root users row where there currently should be an X. Use the su command to switch to the root user using this new password. Alternatively, append a new row to the slash etc slash password file and create an alternative root user. This works because the UID is still set to zero. Again, use the su command to switch to the new root user. Even if a machine has correct permissions on important or sensitive files, a user may have created insecure backups of these files. It is always worth exploring the file system looking for readable backup files. Some common places include user home directories, the system root directory, slash temp, and slash var slash backups. Let's look for interesting files in some common locations. In the system root directory, there is a hidden .ssh directory, which we have permissions to view the contents of. Inside this directory is a world readable file called root underscore key. If we view the contents of this file, it appears to be an ssh private key. The name of the file suggests it may belong to the root user. Before we try to use this key, let's confirm that root logins are even allowed via SSH, as this can be uncommon. It looks like we're good to proceed. Copy the key over to our local machine. And give it the correct permissions. Now use the key to SSH to the Debian VM as the root account.